So the sun's out, so you want the guns out. You want the delts popping. In this video today, I'm gonna to be talking about a few common mistakes that people make when it comes to building big 3D delts. Cue the intro. <laughs> What's going on guys? Gabriel say aka The Truth here. So let's start with the most common mistake that I see people make. And this mistake can literally be changed like that instantly. And that is people work back to front or well, front to back, which is back to front in my opinion. Let me explain. <laughs> so for me, when it comes to building delts, I'll go into the gym and I'll start with the rear delts and make my way round. So let me break that down again. So let's start with the makeup of the shoulders. So you, the shoulders are split into three. You've got the front, middle and rear. And the mistake I see people make is they start from the front, work their way to the middle, and then go to the back. And then by the time they get to the back, you're half assing it. It's a bit like when you train legs and then leave calves till the end. You don't put as much energy into them because you're tired and you just want to get it out of the way. The reason why that is such a, a mistake is because a lot of the exercises that you'll do, so say for bench press, you will use some of the front delt. Any form of pressing movement for the chest or shoulders is predominantly the front delts. And then we go and hit the lateral head. So this is the normal way that most people do it. You then go and hit the lateral head, which you know, you're know you putting in quite a bit of effort so you get the cap. And then you leave the rear delts till last. So they get very little stimulation. This is what I did for a very long time. So this is why I then started to change my way of thinking. I started doing calves before I did, uh, before I did squats and I started doing rear delts before I did any other shoulder exercises. So that means that I'm putting 110% effort into my rear delts, pounding them with the same focus as what I would use for the front delts. And seeing as the front delts get stimulated anyway through a lot of exercises, start with the rear delts. What I do is I also put a few common rear delt exercises that I like to use in the description box as well so you can kind of get a, get a feel for what I'm talking about. So we'll come back to rear delts in a bit. I've got a bit more to talk about, but let's cover the middle, which is the lateral head. So now that we've done the rear, you then move to the side. The funny thing is when people come to me for coaching and stuff and they're like, oh Gabe, I really want that wide look, the tapered look, these broad shoulders and stuff. So they're doing like loads of pressing movements. And I'm like, dude, that's just here. You want that wide look. You need to work here. You need to work the width, the width of your body, not the breadth of your body. So work the lateral head more than you would the front delt. So then you're getting the cap. You get a bigger cap, you create the illusion of a smaller, of like a, that V taper. If you get what I'm, do you, do you get what I'm saying? I feel like my lips are dry. So what I'm saying is you want the wider look, hit the lateral head more. It will also give you the 3D look that you're looking for. But again, let's park that to one side. I'm gonna come back to those and talk about form and stuff like that on all the exercises. But then we'll then move forward to the front delts, which this, in my opinion, needs the least stimulus because of all the stuff that you get from working the other exercises, so like your, your bench press and stuff like that, you will stimulate the front delt anyway. Not saying that you don't need to put as much effort into it because, you know, depending on how your genetic makeup is and all that kind of stuff, you will still have to put a lot of effort into it, but I'm just giving you like um, a hierarchy of how you should really hit it if you really want to build that 3D look. So now, let's talk about the rear delts and the exercises, how to hit them properly and stuff like that. Now, the, the thing that I have noticed from, you know, just trying different angles out and stuff like that is, is first of all, the range of motion for the rear delts is very small. You don't really need to do a lot of stretching and squeezing because when you're doing a lot of stretching and then pulling back, you're then working, when you're stretching, you're extending the arm. So then you're using your arms for the first bit of the movement and coming all the way back, you're then engaging the traps. Which isn't a bad thing because we all want big traps, right? But if we're looking at trying to isolate the rear delt as much as possible, it's a very short movement and you need to feel for it. You need to feel for it, do you get what I'm saying? When it engages, you need to feel for when it comes off. And that's the main thing, when it comes off, you wanna try and keep constant tension on it. Bro, I literally need some Carmex or something. My lips are drying or us. So where was I? Angles, all right, so when, you're, when I'm hitting the rear delts, I've tried different angles. I've tried like really high, I've tried here, I've tried here. What I've found is you need to rotate your arms inwards, so like that. So not to the point that it feels uncomfortable and you're getting a lot of stress on your wrist, but you need to rotate like that. So when I'm doing face pulls, I'll have a slight rotation there and I'm bringing it there. Or try it, like I, I, I was using it like that. So holding the ropes like that and then hitting that rear double bicep pose. Because as soon as you hit that rear double bicep, see the rear delt firing? Along with the other heads of the muscle as well, but it, I found that it really hits the, the rear delt as well. And then when you're doing like the flies, rather than going all the way back, it's a very short range of motion. So play around with the angles a little bit and feel for when 
you you can you'll feel it trust me you'll you'll be doing the exercise and you'll be like oh shit yeah i felt that when you feel that remember it and stick to it okay so now moving on to um the lateral head of the muscle so this is the middle middle strand of the shoulders this is a lot of lateral raises you'll see a lot of people doing lateral raises but people do this wrong all the time. Because what I find is if I lateral raise like this, where I'm standing bolt upright and my arms come up and my hands are coming higher and I'm gripping the bar and stuff like that, I don't feel it in my lateral head. I feel like my, my front delts is burning out before I even start to feel it on the lateral head. So if you've seen the five reasons why your back won't grow video, I take the same thing from that and I use my hands as hooks. I think the best way to do it, the, the way that I kind of got used to the feeling was don't use dumbbells. You see the weight plates with the um, handle? If you have that, or if you can get to somewhere that has that, use that. Because if you get a weight that is heavy enough that you can't hold it so it's straight out like that, you will feel it. You will feel it because you have to use your hands like hooks and that's the only way that I was able to understand and and actually feel feel for it the second thing is pull from the elbows so when you're doing the lateral raises pull from the elbow so you've already got the hook hand and then pull from the elbow so you're not using your hands to finish the movement you're using your elbow and that's a direct connection to the lateral head and then once it gets to parallel to the floor there's no reason for it to go any higher and even when you're when you've got the hook grip you'll find it very very hard to go past that and then the last thing that i started doing for the lateral raises which made a huge difference is I started to lean forward slightly. So you see how I said on the back one, lean back a bit. This one, lean forward so you're not bolt upright. Because when you're bolt upright, then it for I, I just find even if I'm holding the plate, I just find that I'm I'm feeling it in my front delts. And my front delts are ugh. you don't understand. Like I bench pressed the wrong way for a very long time. I was out like this. So I was just pounding my front delts and my shoulders and my back were two of the things that grew very, very fast when I started lifting. Maybe because I played basketball, maybe because I did boxing, maybe because I was doing a lot of rock climbing before when I was younger. So like those had a lot of stimulus from before, but my front delts have been the bane of my life. How can I have big front delts like this and my chest was flat? I was vexed all the time, all the time. I was just like, ah, oh. anyway, I'm going back into history and getting upset. <laughs> Shit. Ah, oh, where was I? Oh yeah, the lateral, <laughs> the lateral raises. So. I, if I lean forward, it then means that I can, like, if I can look at my shoulder and I'll be like, right, that the lateral head is firing like crazy. And I'm not seeing the same kind of muscle fibers pulling on the, the front delt. So I was like, boom, I've got it. That's, that's it. You know, that's, that's money. So I just kept doing that and I started pounding it, pounding it, pounding it. I was changing like the, the rep ranges. So I do like somewhere it's like really, really slow with a pause at the top. So this is this is really light. This is not like heavy, heavy weight. Then down, then really, then up really slow, hold. And then crucifix holds. And then your normal, you know, normal rep range, eight to 12. And then I was doing power lateral raises. So this, like I was going up to like 32 kilos and you're using a little bit of swing, but still we're trying to keep good form. And you're bang, you're just trying to, you're just trying to stimulate different types of fibers within the shoulders, if you get what I'm saying. So um, yeah, those are the main things I did for the lateral head and that's what really gives the V taper look. And the last one is keep the pressing movements, but make sure you're strict with it because your shoulder is a free moving joint. Like if you're doing bench press or you're doing squats and something's slightly off, you can get away with it for a very long time. Shoulders, you mess something up, it's like your shoulder's like this and then it's just tendons and muscles connecting it to other things, as opposed to like your bicep, which is on the bone. So it's just free moving. You you can mess up a whole heap of junk. I'm trying not to curse. Whole heap of junk <laughs> from just doing shoulder exercises wrong. So when I see people pressing and they're doing like the half movements and they're jerking forwards, I'm like, oh, whoa, there's only so long you can get away with that. So when you're doing overhead press, you want to keep it strict. When you're doing the um, seated shoulder press, you want to keep it strict. You want to make sure that your alignment is always right. More than any other exercise, I think, because those are those are the ones that can really mess up. And I've had um, AC joint separation on this side, rotator cuff problems on this side, a lot of shoulder injuries because I did a lot of things wrong and also pounding people in American football with this shoulder just didn't really help. It just compounded the thing. So look after your shoulders. What I'll do also is in the description box, I'm gonna put like a, a sample workout of what 
I'll normally, actually, better than that, I'm gonna record a shoulder workout and I'm gonna show you exactly how we do it. So stay tuned for that. If it's already up and you're watching this video, I'm gonna put the link somewhere on the screen, so check it out. That's pretty much it for shoulders. Just a few little tweaks I found. You'll see from my progression pictures, even when I was only training for a year, my shoulders were obviously a dominant feature on me. Everyone has a dominant feature. Some people have dominant legs. I've never had dominant legs. But when I started to really analyze things, it then took it to another level. So don't look at someone else's progress and say, oh wow, so you, you might do this exercise and you'll be, you, you won't get shoulders exactly the same as me, but you'll see more progression than if you were to do it like normally, like how you're doing it now, if you're making common mistakes. So keep things in perspective, if, if, if that makes sense. Anyway, that's it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. Don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe. And I'm out. Peace. Open excursion. I got a pick of that person. In the trap. Keeping that working. You're not a gangster. You're just an internet version.